everybody, dust off your chain mail because we're going to be making some armor tonight. Oh, well, no, not really. We're just going to be talking to uh, somebody who does make chainmail stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's because it's time for the Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated with sarcasm. Every week, we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever expanding Gigaverse and to play a game with us. No game tonight, but we're going to do something other, something else that's fun. Uh, we do our dance to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and I am joined this week, as with most weeks, my buddy, Mike Kafis. Armor? I hardly knew her. <laughs> this, this week, our guest is August Grappin. Yes, it was one of those August. Hi, August. How are you doing? Welcome Hi, guys. To Welcome to the mess. <laughs> Hashtag dad joke. Uh, yeah. Hashtag uh, low-hanging fruit. Hashtag how to do it. Hashtag okay. sorry, not sorry. All right. Anyway, August... <laughs> Marcus Graffit is an author, podcaster, voice actor, crafter, and gamer. Uh, as Hey, I don't know if you noticed that intro was... My intro this week was a little bit off. You know why? Because I forgot to write a catchy, witty line, and I did that off the cuff, and I'm terrible at doing that off the cuff, so I apologize. I, I had all this stuff set up, and I'm just like, oh, I forgot to do that, didn't I? <laughs> so anyway... Like, oh, God, I, here comes the corner. Here comes yeah, the corner. Oh. <laughs> But the rest of it's all set up. I got everything else set up, so there's no, uh, there's no, there's no more whoopsies. It's going to um, be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Everything's fine. It's perfect. That was a perfect intro. Uh, great. It was great. Fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> everything's on fucking fire. All right. Anyway. <laughs> so, August, um, so I saw that, you know, I, I've, I saw your chain mail at, at Balticon. You came down to Balticon or uh -huh. over, over, over. For, me, over? For, me it's, for me, it's up. Yes. Up, yeah, okay, a little south. It's south and west, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I saw some of your your chain mail. It's, it's mm -hmm. fine, fine work. Um, mm -hmm. and and I've I've made some chain mail in my time. Never yes, made any. Has. Never made any jewelry chain mail, but I made like like real chain mail. I never like uh, the letters. Let me, let me put it to you this way. <laughs> no, not did not <laughs> with my pen pal. Um, no. <laughs> No, I've I made uh, I've made like sex into chain mail, and I, I did like a piece of a, a for a back of a glove and stuff. I never really did anything yeah. great with it. Not even enough yeah. for a uh, what do you call it? Not even enough for a uh, thong. Booby tassels? No, yeah, booby tassels <laughs> or a thong. Well, no, a enough chain. for a. Wait a minute. If you were an Amazon and it was a booby tassel, yes, sure. <laughs> but, uh, a booby so I, tassel. So the thing is, I learned I learned how to do it. Uh, I mean, you know, but I never really did much with it. I did do this really interesting uh, thing one time. Um, so we, we – there was this hotel in Baltimore called the Lord, Lord Baltimore Hotel that, uh, <laughs> that, that shut down. And I, I don't know if they ever reopened it or not, but I remember they, they closed it down and they were letting people come in and take whatever they wanted out of it. So like curtains, <laughs> you could pull up carpet. You could, I mean just anything that was laying around because they were going to tear it all out and gut it all out anyway. Um, and I found in the basement, I found this huge bucket of this like, uh, oval, uh, chain, you know, and you know, the lights that hang from the ceiling and they got the thing that goes up and it comes down and it was kind of like old school, but they had like these, uh, these like golden oval chain, uh, that would, that, that you put on the wire. So I took a whole bunch of that and I brought it home and then I undid a bunch of the links and I made this oval like chain mail, this big piece of oval like chain mail so if you held it this way the <laughs> oval would turn and it would become real long and then you could take it the other way and then it would drop down again and it was it was ridiculously hard to actually make chain mail out of that because i had to keep remembering like how the pieces were because i'm like because they're not round they're oval i'm like wait fuck how's this piece go it so, was like <laughs> it was like 16 by 9 chain mail <laughs> yeah oh and it was heavy as shit too it was so impractical but um but I, before, prior to doing that, I, 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 had, I had made my own links. So, um, mm -hmm. do you make your own? Do you make your own links, or do you do you buy them open link, or how do you do that? No, I, I, I do buy them. Um, if I were to make my own, you know, I wouldn't have any time to actually weave anything because I also have so many other hobbies. Like you said, I'm a podcaster, a novelist, voice actor. I run, um, and I have a day job with a forty to 60 minute commute one way. So, I mean, yeah. if I had made my own rings, I'm just okay. not oh, for it. Time out, two things. First of all. Hi, Mike. You, <laughs> you run. Uh-huh. Like, like, as in, like, exercise, run? Like, you run because someone's, no one's chasing you, you just run. Imaginary zombies chase me. 
All right, there's another one. Wait a minute, you run for the injury. Yeah, yeah I can't. I, can't. I just, I'm sorry. I just, I, all right. <clears throat> all right, how, <laughs> what is the longest you've run? Because this will determine how irate I get. 8.1 miles. Okay, that's not so bad. All right, I, no. uh, now my girlfriend, her brother. Now, here's the thing, her brother, that, was, that was without stopping for a walk break. Uh, well, I mean, that's not bad. But my girlfriend, <laughs> her brother, he will like run for like he'll run like hundred mile marathons and stuff and that just oh it just gripes my ass mm. and I don't know why. But anyway. You um, know Mike, that's... I'm with hey, Mike, I'm totally with you. I work I work a good friend of mine that I work with, Lisa, she runs she runs all these marathons. She does like half Iron Man's and stuff like that. And she said, you know, I asked her, I said, how long is this this one run? I think I think it was the half Iron Man. I said, how long is this gonna take you? And she says, it's about twelve hours. You know, so it's like swimming, biking, running. I was like so, so let me get this straight. Let me just, so I'm on the same page as you. You are going to start exercising and you're not going to stop exercising for 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. And she's <laughs> like, she's like, you know, I never thought of it like that. I was like, yeah, I go to the gym 30 minutes later. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> done, <Yeah>. done. <laughs> you know. now, now that said, all right, I, I wanted to put that out of the way, but now I would like to raise you up. Uh, August oh, and say, I know, you know, we've, we're, we're friends on Facebook and I know you have yeah. gone through some trial and tribulations with your employment. And I would just no, like no. to say, congratulations. You have a, you have a, a job now. How is it going? Yeah. Cause I haven't had a chance <laughs> to really check in with you. How is that it's going? going? It's going really well. Um, okay. I am still currently a temp, but I have an application to become permanent Great. and cross your fingers, knock on wood. That'll come through and I'll be happy again. But keeping them crossed. Yeah. Yeah. Keep those crossed, toes crossed, eyes crossed. I appreciate yeah. it. We've had we've had several friends in the last oh, I don't know like year or two mm -hmm. at least I've had several friends in the last year or two that um that have been like in between jobs for a chunk of time you know James Carpio's working again Mike mm -hmm. yeah I don't know yeah, if know. you know that but man mm -hmm. it's just like wow uh, mm -hmm. I don't know it's just it's just I, it it's hard for me to imagine being out of work for a long period of time and I know you know it's it's generally not people's choice at no. least the people I know mm -hmm. um and it's it's like. I'm like, God, I'm like, that's got to suck being out of work for a long time. Yeah. Okay. Now yeah. the economy's doing great. Now let's get yeah. back to some other <laughs> more important things like this amazing chain mail. <laughs> right. Right. So, all right. So, so you buy your links um, and then do they, do you, all right. So I'm assuming that these links, you buy like open links and closed links. Nope. I just nope. buy packages of them. Hang on. I got, I'm like right in my studio. So. I can show you. They come literally in just bags. Okay. Now, are they open or closed? Um, they are straight off the coils. They're neither opened nor closed. I don't know if you can see, but there is just a tiny little bit of a gap. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So they all come like that. I can buy them open or closed, but it costs extra. I'm like, why? I can do it myself. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, for people who don't know, because because I mean, if you've never put chain mail together before, uh, mm -hmm. basically, if I used to make my own, right? So yeah. you'd 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 buy you rolled your own. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, you'd buy uh, I don't know, 12, 14 gauge steel wire, um, mm -hmm. or whatever gauge you want to work in, and and basically, the thicker the gauge, or the the well, the lower the gauge number, the thicker the wire, usually right. the bigger the opening, um, and then you you'd get like a dowel. And you'd mm -hmm. put the wire in the dowel and you'd run it on a drill or a lathe or whatever machine. I, I used a drill because that's what I had. And you'd yep. hold that wire nice and tight and you'd run a coil down and you get like this tight, like spring looking thing. And then you yep. go down the center of it with a pair of aviation snips and click, 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 click. And you get all these open rings. And then if you're making, if you're going to make your own chain mail and you're doing all this yourself, then you'd go through and close a chunk of them. Just go ahead and automatically close the chunk of them. At least that's the way I did it. And then uh, you, you loop them together. You loop the... And, and you got to do like the pattern is basically you know the Olympic symbol. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much the pattern for chainmail. Although there's multiple patterns. Like which pattern? Oh, do you use different uh, patterns, or do you use? Uh, I do. A particular I do everything. Um, okay. I mean, because I because for my artwork, I generally will only use what, what's probably the most common um, weave, which is European foreign one, where each mm -hmm. ring has four others going through it. Mm -hmm. um, right. This is actually one of my bracelets that I wear all day long. And this thing is actually two separate weaves in one. It's got the main wow. bracelet as one weave. This is called Gridlock Byzantine. And then this smaller one that I have that insets it is called JPL3. I probably know just offhand, I would say anywhere between like four and six dozen weaves myself. 
and that's barely scratching the surface. Wow, that's that <laughs> there, is amazing. There are tons of them. That and that's that's a lot of work, man. It d doing chain mail is. I mean, it's like you said, buying them yourself is probably you know a good way to go because oh, yeah. of, of all the 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 work it is just just doing the just putting the chain mail together. If you were actually making all your own links, that would be I don't know that probably double your time. Mm -hmm. I would think. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm just not equipped for it either. Um, and there are people who are and they specialize in making the rings. So why not support them? They're artists too. So right. um, my, my primary supplier actually um, made, they did a lot of the costumes for the World of Warcraft movie. They did the elven armor for the Hobbit trilogy. Oh, wow. Um, they've, done a, they've done a couple others. So I actually, yeah, I actually have three of the leftover buckles from the World of Warcraft movie I'm going to use in the costume eventually. Not three, I have six of them. But yeah. <laughs> that's That's wild. So, I mean... So these people, these are people who have like a process. So when they make them, they probably make bags and oh, bags and bags of these things that go right. Big, big company, yeah. yeah. They're they're based out of Canada. No, go on, Mike. Okay, I, I was going to make mention of this, and I ne I could not believe that a this worked and b that it was this cheap. But on uh, Amazon one one time, I bought for seven dollars. I bought like a square of chain mail, and it's sold as it's um great for scrubbing pots yep. and it's very strong very sturdy um and i loved it and i cannot believe it was seven dollars because you know how amazon will tell you like oh this was like you know eighty dollars and you we're gonna give it to you for seven and you realize three months later it's only seven dollars <laughs> but anyway mm. um i like i was like is this a way that people like i, I okay how much do you get like you're <laughs> your little supply bag. How much is that? Like how much are you buying your, your material for? I didn't know like how much that this, would cost. This bag that I held up earlier is a few ounces of rings. And this is a straight stainless steel. These are pretty small rings though. This was like 20 bucks. Wow. Again, that's so, stainless steel. That's going to, I mean, aluminum is cheaper. Mm -hmm. Obviously but you don't want to use aluminum. If you're going to use it as a pot scrubber, you're going to want stainless steel. Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, but but something that you'll get on Amazon like that is probably machine made. Sure, either, just... either, that or, either that or sweatshop made. <laughs> sweatshop made. By the way, if you're looking for a place Wait, I can get it for you cheaper. Yeah, what? Yeah, oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> you cut out on us there for just <laughs> oh, a second. Yeah. I was gonna say, you were just I, making I, a weird face for a minute. I have a, oh, I, I have a hookup for him. I might be able to get it for you cheaper. That's all. I'm just saying. You know, I <laughs> I, I might know somebody. Jeff Bezos. I, you know. So I also I also noticed that you uh, a lot of your chainmail comes in you have colored like you do like um, faces and stuff in it and you have uh, now do you do do you have to paint those or do you can you buy like blue rings and red rings and um, depends on the material stainless steel will not hold color um, titanium and aluminum can be anodized mm -hmm. okay so they can come in a variety of different colors aluminum has the biggest variety of colors um, I have hang on, a little card I've got like. 30 or 40 different colors I can get in aluminum at least. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, you know, ridiculously bright, different shades of, you know, red, orange, yellow, green, et cetera. Um, that gives me a lot of variety, not as much as if I were to say be doing cross stitch and have thread, but enough that I can, you know, have some variance and do like a little bit of basic shading. Um, but they do come that way. It's a, it's an electrochemical process. Right. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Um, now but, is, Titanium is that a lot more expensive than stainless steel? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's a lot more of a pain in the butt to work with too. Can I curse right. on this show? Yes. Yeah. Pain in the ass. ass. <laughs> Titanium is evil. Okay. So I worked with like, it, but I felt oh, so what? bad. What uh, and I kind of remember this, but I'm thinking if anyone like the for and as an example the um bracelet that you just held up what yeah. what would that like if you if someone wanted to buy that what would that sell for something like this, you, you made if i were to duplicate this bracelet in the size where it fits my wrist obviously it's if it's longer it's going to take me more time going to use more materials it'd be more expensive um this bracelet i think would sell for like 125 maybe okay i've never actually priced this one it's mine okay <laughs> oh hang on got an extra guest oh can't uh. attention Right. She's demanding attention. 
Well, they anyway. they all got they all got a nice little introduction to my uh, puppy last last week. Um, oh lord! Yeah, we we were doing this show and and my puppy chewed through my land cable, so the show went dead. Oh, and it, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that that's the thing that happened first time. Hey, Mike, you're are you going through your mixing board? No. Okay. All right. You sounded like you, you sounded a little low there. Like like. Hey everybody. <laughs> <laughs> for a second mm. i don't know. uh anyway all right so um so that that's really cool where did you learn how did you learn how to do all this stuff like where did you learn this from um self-taught um between youtube videos online tutorials um buying tutorials from other artisans and i'll just teach myself to do it in a lot of practice Okay, that's cool. Cause I I learned when I did mine, I learned mine from SCA folk. So I was hanging out with a bunch oh, of SCA yeah. folk, and and oh, uh, yeah. there was a uh, in the what what the hell kingdom are we in? The kingdom of uh, Atlantia, I think. Um, I think that's what we are. Uh, I, it's been so long since I've been to one of those, but uh, my brother belonged to it, and he took me to one of their meetings and stuff. And they happened to have a a blacksmith shop at their location. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the guy was making like you know these uh, these gauntlets. When, when I went in there, he's making he was making a set of gauntlets with the actual individual fingers, um, yeah. and he had a bunch of chainmail sitting around. And um, he kind of got me started a little bit with showing me how it was done. And then a friend of mine that I went to high school with was making chainmail, and uh, he showed he was in into SCA as well, and he showed me how to uh, how to, like how to get it right. And, uh, but he's like, he's like, look, just cause you can like put the links together the right way. Doesn't mean you can actually make armor because you know, there's patterns just like making clothes, you know, that's that getting the links together is one half of it. You know, you, know, <laughs> you get your shirt yeah. together and it doesn't, you know, it's like, I can't get my arm up and the one sleeve is longer <laughs> than the other. And, you know, and forget making no. a coif if you don't know what you're doing. Oh, uh, no, no, no. A coif. That's the head piece. That's the, oh. the, the, the cat piece. Oh. For glaven. Yes, yes. Oh, I remembered a question I wanted to ask you, August. Okay. What is it like to be? <laughs> Are you scared? Don't be scared. Sir. Don't be scared. What, <laughs> what, we'll be what is it like? <laughs> what is it like to be named after the first emperor of Rome? I'm actually not named after the first emperor of Rome. I'm named after a day on a calendar. Who was named after the first emperor of Rome? Yeah. But, but no, that's the month. I'm named after a day. My middle name is first. Ah, uh, well, okay. All right. Yeah. But in other words, but actually, it's, it's pretty awesome. I mean, Augustus yeah. Caesar, was, he was a badass. Yeah, I mean, he's like the first emperor. I mean, you know, it's like the, uh, the emperor. You know, it's like I just equated to that. And, you know, he's the guy. You know, he overthrew mm -hmm. the whole no, <laughs> yeah. shebang. And what's even funnier, you know, is because, you know, they tend, they supposedly called him Caesar because he was a cesarean section. Yeah, so was I. So I'm technically August Caesar. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, fun fact. You got that going for you. Very yeah, nice. and I love Caesar salads. So it's triple whammy. Huh. <laughs> Alas, I wasn't a cesarean. I was ripped from my mother. Never mind. Anyway. Um... Right, so anyway, uh, so why, why, why? It was tongs. Twitch... It was salad tongs. Okay. Didn't... Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Why, why a, uh, a Twitch channel? Why, why do chain mail on a Twitch channel? What, um, what was the thinking behind that? Um, well, I've been, I got into Twitch just randomly. My brother had me watch a speed run of, uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And I just started randomly going on YouTube, finding speed runs of my favorite video games from when I was a kid. And then I stumbled onto Twitch. And then through Twitch, I stumbled onto other crafters. I mean, there's a huge creative community on Twitch. Right. I'm, just, I'm just the cutest one. So, okay. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's, it's ridiculously therapeutic. People come in and watch, and I'll, I'll just be sitting there. I'm, I've done even just like my pattern making for making uh, the chainmail art. But between that, between actually doing the weaving, people are like, oh my God. This is just so soothing. I am so relaxed right now. I think I actually put a guy from England to sleep earlier this week. Or last week. <laughs> hey, we put people to sleep all the time. <laughs> well, he was he was up late. Okay. <laughs> he couldn't oh. sleep. He turned into my stream. He's like, okay, I'm going to bed now. I'm like, awesome. I'll see you later. What is your what's your listenership like? Like, what is your your average tune-ins? Um, it really depends because I actually stream both chainmail and I actually do gaming. Um, I do okay. some casual like like RPGs. Um, my RPG gaming is pretty pretty low, but I usually end up with. I mean, I, I've only been streaming for two months, um, and I've only actually been streaming Chainmail for a month. 
Um, so I, I usually get anywhere from, you know, three to 20 people in on any of my chain mail streams, depending on the time of night. Yeah. No, I mean, listen, we're, we're, um, we're growers too. So oh, yeah. we, we know what that's like. And so um, you're not a shower, Mike? No, no, we are, we are definitely growers. Uh, we'll, we'll hopefully we can show at some point, but no one wants to see this, right? No one wants to see hey, Mike, numbers. I got to tell you, you know what? There's people in the chat room saying this too. You definitely are. I'm not. I'm not kidding. You're. You're like. You're like. Hur, hur, everybody. You're like lower for some reason. Like, it's. It's really weird, I, dude. I don't know. What do you mean? I, I can unplug my. Uh, unplug my USB uh, mic and plug it back in or something. I guess. No, it's not. It's not bad. I'm just. I just. It's just weird. Anyway, like I. I asked someone if <laughs> my mom said, "Don't remind me, son." My mom's in a chat room, and I. I, I said I was ripped from, ripped from her place because yeah, she was yeah, there. Yeah. I knew that. And anyway, um, uh, no, I, I asked her, <laughs> of course, Jonathan's asking if I took a hit from a bong, which yes. I did not, but uh, I'm, I'm asking if I still sound, do I, everyone, do I still sound like that? Do I still sound, yeah. oh, yeah. at some point you went, McLovin or what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, un know. I'll unplug and replug. All right. <laughs> All right. So, so anyway, um, yeah, so we, you know, I talked to, I can't, you know, I can't remember. I don't know if it was on our show or, or someone else I talked to. But yeah, there was somebody else I was talking to who who does uh, who does uh, uh, like creative stuff on Twitch, mm -hmm. and yeah, I, can't, I think they crocheted, and mm -hmm. I was like, what? And like, oh yeah, it's really big. People love it. People mm -hmm. will sit and watch you for hours just creating. Yeah. And I was like, really? I, I was yeah. really surprised. And and I mean, not there's anything wrong with it. I was just, it was just interesting to me. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I like just sitting and watching uh, other creative streams. I do things from like, um, uh, like miniature painting to like watercolors, chain mail. There's, I know of at least one leather worker, a, um, a wood burner, a uh, couple of seamstresses. Uh, there's one guy that makes ridiculously amazing messenger bags. Mm -hmm. I actually finally got to see one of his pieces in person at Balticon this last year because I, I recognized the bag from the stream and I'm like, oh wow, okay, you're not you're not actually the guy. He's like, no, but I've seen you in chat because you're the chain nerd. So and I was like, wait, so what's your username? And we recognize each other. I'm like, oh my god. So it's yeah, it's wow. definitely a thing. Um, now do you have to make, I, I guess you have to make cool stuff, right? I mean, it can't be like like <laughs> like if I was making stuff really bad, or would that be funny? It, it depends. I mean, a lot of creative streamers do, you know, they have other things going on in chat, you know, games and, and stuff. I'm debating making people pay to make me eat uh, those bean boozled if I get a bad jelly bean. <laughs> Just uh -huh. watch me gag for a minute on stream. But, you know, I mean, but, uh, but yeah, people do all kinds of stuff. Like the, the guy that makes the messenger bags, if something awesome happens, he pulls out an accordion and starts playing. It's like, you're not getting any work done, dude, but, but people love it. Um, there's this uh, lot of interaction. Yeah. I mean, it's not like I'm sitting there chain mailing and not talking to anybody. It's it's very interactive. Pete and I are monkeys. We'll we'll dance for money. Yeah, exactly. We'll dance for do money. Yeah, we'll dance. We'll do whatever for dance money. For pizza, dude. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, hey, Mike. I'm sorry, yeah. man. Is is your mic? Uh, did did uh, still bad. I unplugged. No, still bad, huh? Uh, no? no, no. Stop. Stop talking and listen. Are you are you coming through your laptop now? Cause now you sound like you're in a cave. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> just, just check. Just ch anyway. I'm sorry, folks. It's, it's, uh, it's the tech wits. I can't help it. All right. So let's let's talk about your novels. Cause you write books too. So you write. Yeah. You have a series. I mean, you have several. All right. So you, you have a series. You also have other books. But what was really interesting mm -hmm. is you have this nice ongoing, uh, long series. It's Luke Bertrand. Uh, what is it? The mm -hmm. Asat. Deadly, I'm sorry, Deadly Studies series. So tell, yeah. tell me about this series. What what is this series about? Like, what is what is the main theme or the the the, the uh, main drive of this series? Well, this is actually the spinoff series of somebody you've had on the uh, on the show before, John Walker. Oh, it's a John Walker. No, okay, oh. good. Yeah. it's a spinoff. It's a spinoff of his Stafford Chronicles. Luke is a character that you meet in the very beginning of the series, and okay. he pops in and out over the course of it. He is the head of the East Coast Guild of Assassins in the United States, uh, uh, and so right. my series is actually his backstory. Um, and it starts, oh boy, um, maybe twenty years or so before he actually even meets um, the main character, Tom. And goes through the end of I'm wanting to say book five of the Stafford Chronicles. So I'm actually getting very close to the end of this because book eight 
should be out um, at the beginning of 2019. And there's only going to be 10 books in the series. So the okay. last three will be out next year. So, so then this series takes place, say, in the, the what, the, the 1990s, 90s, 2000s? Book, book, one, book one starts in 1992, I believe. Okay, all right. And uh, goes through the end of 2014. That's so interesting. You know, about 20 years. I don't think I've ever heard of that. I don't think I've ever heard of an author having a series of books and another author just taking one of the characters <laughs> and making a whole. I think it's cool. I think I actually, I, think, I, I actually like this a lot even more now. I, you know, because I was like, I was like, this looks really cool. You got all these books, and it sounds like an interesting premise. Um, and and now that I know that it, it's like a, t it's like a, like, oh, well, I guess a prequel in a, a way, a but not really because it's. It's a paraphrase. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because the mm -hmm. his stories don't are not defined by these stories. It's only one mm -hmm. of the characters that, hey, is, yep. that is defined. Pete, yeah. I have good news and bad news. Okay. Uh, what do you want first? I don't know. The bad news is John Walker's in the chat room now. The good oh, news no. is John Walker's in the chat room now. <laughs> oh boy. Hey, John. Uh, I guess this show is about to go off the rails then, yes. right? At any he, moment. He's the one who grabs the wheel. Right. Hey, Mike, you sound good now. Oh, do I? Oh, great. I'm glad I sound good. Oh, and by the way, um, Scott and Tori both were saying that uh, I should eat a bag of bamboozled. Um, oh, the bamboozled. Yeah, you should. Oh, and, shit. No. And, now, that no, said. Because you know what, that Mike? Said, yeah, I think that's a great idea because you know why, Pete? Because it's my turn. Yes, it's your turn. <laughs> and Mike, everybody? Mike, and, and is it does it also have to do with the fact that I absolutely hate jelly beans? Like all jelly beans, like even the best jelly bean tastes oh, like shit to me. You know what? <laughs> I love how things just fall into place. I'd like, <laughs> I'd like to thank Tori for making this moment possible for me. I'd, I love you, babe. I love yeah, you. Hey, thank you. Hey, Tori. Tori. That's a that's a thing thanks. that's gonna happen now. Thank you. Yes. I'm <laughs> so happy. August, so do, you, do you do you know about the the little thing that I had to do at uh, Balticon this year? Did you hear about that little? It was. It was. Uh, um, I was in the panel right after you guys. I actually took a mouthful myself. Okay. Oh, just, all okay. right. All right. Yes. All right. We yeah. we haven't been able to air it yet because Mike is looking oh. for another job. Yeah, I'm I'm, we... I'm currently looking for a job. I have a job, but I'm looking for a job until I can get that job. I am not. I just can't You're have that holding that show hostage <laughs> out there. <laughs> Sitting on this gold mine. It is one of the I, I, best bits look, that we I have, ever I, did. If I could just sit on it, that I, I, I swear I would. Okay? I think you're doing it on purpose. I think if you're actually sacrificing. Not it out there, I would sit you on are it. sacrificing your pay. <laughs> I would sit so, on a bag of dicks <laughs> to not have it out there. You're literally <laughs> sitting on a bag of dicks, Mike. <laughs> oh. All right. So, all right, so, great. So, <laughs> anyway. Where were we? All right, so you have you have ten books planned, and then yeah. that's it. And that's and and is that will get him at the end of the the tenth book. Will that put him right at John Walker's series? No, that'll put him at the end of book five of John Walker's series. Um, book seven, which just came out ooh, at the beginning of this month, um, the is where Luke actually does meet the character. Book uh, book nine, which I'm currently writing the first draft of. Um, is where we start to overlap with John's series. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Neat. Oh, neato, neato. So I actually uh, got to write how the two of them meet, which was extremely daunting. <laughs> right. And um, now, do you have to? So collaborating with another author like that, um, uh -huh. I've always wondered this because I know Cooley uh, did some stuff with Sigler, and there's been a bunch of yeah. people that, that have done stuff with Sigler. Um, yeah. And, and that process, is, is it a back and forth? Like, do you have to, when you write a book, do you run it through John just to make sure you're not getting outside the scope of his world? Um, when I first started picking up Luke, first of all, when he asked me to, I about crapped myself. Right. Um, nice. But uh, but I when I first figured out you know what how I wanted to approach it I wrote a basic outline of seven books um and eventually figured out yeah it's gonna end up being 10 which I was like oh darn I have to write more books how dare yeah. I um but pretty much throughout this entire process as I've written it every chapter I've sent them to John and right. he's always coming back with like oh my god you're amazing and we've had a couple of like great conversations where we'll bounce ideas back and forth um and you know we both have those oh my god you're a genius oh my god i'm a genius moments 
Mm -hmm. um, right. But but generally, he's given me a pretty free reign, especially considering that, like I said, there's you know, seven, almost seven books before he even meets Thomas. Right. So I, that was like just pure open, open world for me to explore. All I had to do was get him to become the person that Luke is uh, when you see him in the first book. Right. So, right. So. And how, how's that pacing? Is that hard to do getting to to pace a character from, you know, because as your character grows through your novels, mm -hmm. uh, you know where they need to be at a certain book. Is it has it been difficult to get that pacing right to take them from where they were to where they are? Not for for me, it's not. But I'm the type of person who looks at the what happened, uh, the how something happens and not necessarily what happens. I love spoilers because I want to see how the thing develops as opposed to just what exactly it is that happens itself. Right. So it, just having that end point was kind of ideal for me, actually. I didn't have to worry about the end game. I just had to get there. Oh, just had to get there. Yep, yep. That's, yep. Uh, that's cool. Very cool. Um, so, so, yeah, go ahead, Mike. No, I I want to um I want to get to the pod. I don't want to I want to leave enough time to talk about the podcast because gotcha. I want to get that information out there, and I also want you, August, to give Pete some examples and some uh some advice because he is about to embark on a journey that he's been promising to do for a couple of years now, and what, I is he going to raise you guys Balticon episode? No, he is. <laughs> He, I, <clears throat> he is going to do NaNoWriMo. So, oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, so he needs all of the help. And since we have you as a guest, I want you to – I would like to take some time. Uh, and I think that probably taking some time to listen to The Melting Pot is probably one of – The Melting Podcast um, is the best – one of the best ways he can prepare. What say you? Um. Well, speaking as somebody who has done and won NaNoWriMo five times, um, a couple times with double the amount of words, the best advice I have for doing NaNoWriMo is plan. I would, I, I almost never finished so much as a short story until I started outlining. Right. Just having, you know, even a very basic outline, even just bullet points, just beginning, middle, and end. And all you have to do is just have words on the page. They don't have to be good words. Just get words on a page. Hey, and all every, my words are the best words. <laughs> I have the best words. No. <laughs> They're really, 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 really good words. Right. Now, actually, you know, that's. Uh, I'm glad you said that because um, I actually do. I, I have. Um, I have all the characters that I want in the book already thought out. This is a book I've been planning on doing for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's been a long time I've been planning this book out, and I've got copious notes of things I want to happen in it. I know how it ends. Um, I know how it begins, and I know some stuff in the middle. Um, but uh, I have scenes in my that I've already come up with that I I've never I haven't written them, but I know what they are. You know, I know I know mm -hmm. like this oh, yeah. is going to happen here, and I want it to be like this. Um, but I have uh, like ten fleshed out characters and um they're you know i've got backgrounds written up on them and i've got uh a couple paragraphs on what i want them what what i want to happen to them in the novel what role they play mm -hmm. uh notes on how they grow how they how they grow from the character they were to the character they are uh how you know how certain things are supposed to affect them um but these are just like like you know narrator notes these aren't these aren't um or writer's notes they're they're not any of the words that would go into the book itself. And mm -hmm. then I've started with chapter one. This is what happens in chapter one. You know, just a paragraph. This is, you know, yep. they're going to go here. This is going to happen. Bah, 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 bah. And then like then I have chapter two and chapter three. Um, and so I've started doing that. And I think before, by the time NaNoWriMo starts, I'll have every, not every chapter, because I'm sure things will change as I write, but every oh, chapter yeah. that I know at the moment, um, everything that I know, um, that I can know before I get started uh, is going to be is going to have like a paragraph on it saying this is what is going to happen in this chapter. Um, so I, I'm going to be very prepared when it starts. So hey, I'm in hope, the immortal words for success, in the immortal words of Paul E. Cooley, and I had to pin this: words suck; they are your enemy. Make them pay. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will make them pay. Um, no, and I just want to remind Cooley. I think Cooley is writing. I think. I think he's writing the book that we die in, Mike. <gasps> oh, I think he is. I think. Horrible death. And oh, it, 
August, you're a writer too. We invite yeah. every and anyone in the chat room, all writers in the chat room right now, we humbly beg of all writers to kill us. Oh, God, kill me. Kill us terribly in your book. Find the worst way for us to die. I don't know if anyone's going to be able to top Cooley, and we don't, we're going to keep that a secret because it's just, you know, between, you know, uh, it's a little, um, you know, we don't want to let the shit out of the bag. But, uh, you know, I dare anyone to kill us. That's all I'm saying. We have a death chip on our shoulder. Oh, it's the black ext – okay, I'm sorry. No, he's not. He's doing the black extent oh. extinction. I thought he was doing the next black book, but he's not. Uh, he said that. Hang on. Are you, guys, are you guys supposed to die in the black four? Yes. I think I'm supposed to, I think I'm supposed to die in the black four. Oh, oh, like two oh years nice. Old. Okay. We're going to be Dedrin. Supposedly. Like yeah, Redford, but Dedrin. 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 Fantastic. Corpse yes. yes. <laughs> awesome. Oh, well, it'll be, a, it'll be an honor to die, uh, oh, among yeah. you. <laughs> yes. Yes. We'll be dying in good company. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So, all right. So, so Mike mentioned the melting pot cast. So tell us about yeah. the podcast, the podcast. Um, the, uh, the Melting Podcast is a writing variety show. We do everything from short and flash fiction. We interview authors. We review books. Um, we um, go to, you know, as many of the writing and authoring panels as we can at, you know, conventions that we go to, which right now is pretty much just Balticon. Um, but we record those and, you know, re-release them so people that don't go can hear them. Um, shoot, what else do we do? We, we gripe about crimes in literature Oh, we put famous monologues through layers upon layers of Google Translate and completely botch them. And uh, probably one of my favorite segments is what we call the mystery meal, where we take famous scenes from literature and turn them into Mad Libs. So we do everything from word games to short fiction. We have, um, you know, we take uh, stories of uh, pretty much anywhere up to 5,000 words in any genre except for erotica. We don't go, we don't go dirty. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll produce them and we love new authors. We love, uh, we, we put out prompts for short stories. Basically if it's involves writing, we probably do it. And as far as I know, we're the only writing variety show out there. So therefore we're the best. Ah, okay. All right, very cool. Um, and, and how often, how often does, uh, does an episode come out? How often do you do episodes? How often do they come out? Um, we do episodes on the first and 15th of every month. Okay. And we've done that for, let's see, we just had our, how old am I? I'm 30, okay. Um, the podcast birthday is the same as my birthday. That's the only reason okay. I remember it. <laughs> um, so that we just had our fourth uh, birthday back at the beginning of August. What? No, happy so, birthday. So, so, so there's a good backlog of stuff. So the podcast was named after a person who was named after a month who was named after uh, <laughs> the first emperor of Rome. This is getting <laughs> Deep in uh, inception here. Okay. It's the uh, it's the uh, endorsed Roman Imperial podcast. Ooh, okay. nice, nice, nice. Caligula. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, right. So I got I got a question for you. So, uh, have you been you've been po you've doing this podcast for four years? How long have you been podcast? Is this your is this the only podcast you've ever done? Or first podcast? It's it's the only podcast I've ever done. Um. I have, you know, I've, I've submitted stories and had them read on other podcasts. Um, in the in the time since I started podcasting, I've been on other podcasts, either as like an interviewee or a voice actor and such. Um, right. But yeah, this is this is the only podcast I've done. I am working on the final production for an, a, a short audio dramedy um, that's going to be released, at, you know, as if it were a podcast. But uh, okay. but yeah, this is this podcast is my baby. All right. So I have a I have a question for you, now, Mike. Uh, we, we all have our stories of, of how, like that, like our craziest things that have happened to us due to podcasting. Um, what, what, what would you say the most interesting, uh, moment you've had as a direct result of being a podcaster? Like what, cause I, I've, I've, I've been doing it now for uh, close to 10 years and I've had a, I've had a whole bunch of really weird podcasting uh, episodes, things I would have, like if I were to say, you're going to sit in a mic and talk and you're going to do a podcast, I would have thought, well, nothing crazy, nothing crazy is going to happen with that. Uh, and I've had <laughs> quite a few. Last week I had the cord bitten through. That wasn't, a, that wasn't that crazy. It was, that was interesting. But I've, yeah, I've had some really, like, like I've uh, podcast from a bathroom once uh, at a hotel. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so what, what is the, your, your oddest podcasting experience to date? Um, my oddest, like anything at a convention where you've done podcasting stuff or, uh, 
You ever thrown up on it, like while you're recording one or anything like that? I or, 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 or like, oh, you 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 never do live or never do like uh, where you can't. Stop oh, or stop a recording. Do you guys we, do it? We've done live shows at the last two Balticons. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Um, so we, I mean, we've done those, and those are. But I mean, like on camera, you don't do like all the. Yeah. No. Uh, okay. No, we have, but we do have. Um, we have a Patreon, and we do a special Patreon backer only accessible episode every year. Okay. And the one that we did last year, we actually. Um, we're, we've actually been talking about trying to get video for for our episode this year, but for last year, um, me and the, the two other uh, co-hosts, Aaron and Theo, just audio recorded ourselves playing 10 rounds of Cards Against Humanity with an extra card thrown in just for the viewers themselves. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the viewers still didn't win, um, right. <laughs> despite, despite overwhelming odds. Um, now, I think probably one of the weirdest things was it's a you know 12-hour drive from uh, home to Balticon. And it's one that I made with, uh, with Aaron. And so I'm driving, we're driving through the night to avoid traffic and actually get there in the morning. And we pulled out the microphone a couple of times and played sleep deprived word games. <laughs> that one was definitely, that one was definitely we we're going back and listening to them when I was wide awake and editing it. Cause we, we released those in an episode. <laughs> um, See, Pete, Pete and I have this thing where we, we, we would love to do more, like, just live stuff, mm -hmm. but that's the thing. We don't want to edit it, and so yeah. <laughs> we're scared of ourselves because if we go live and we go off the rails too much, I mean, we're going to lose the 10 listeners we have right now <laughs> and live watchers we have now. Oh, like, cause, yeah. Might because, say, like, well, yeah, things that we regret. <laughs> yeah, right. I might say. Because in the moment, you just say stuff. In the and, moment, it's yeah. funny. And, you know, right. people. some people don't understand, like, where we come from as our background. And we may say something thinking we know where we're in our in and what, mm -hmm. what, where our beliefs and our things are. What but our context is and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And it's just like – We don't want to offend anybody, but, jeez. It's so hard. It's, it's so easy to offend people. No. Yeah, nowadays. Yeah, but so, for, um, me, so hold on, saying, for me, it was a couple weeks ago. Remember, for me, a couple weeks ago, where I I uh, had uh, podcasted from the side of the road in Virginia. Yeah, <laughs> when I was driving home. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That was pretty great. At a gas station. <laughs> and again, you had to pull over in a gas station, and uh, and and because and do a live stream because if he's driving down the road trying to live stream with us and it just wasn't working, so he he pulled over and ate. The, what was what was that gas station? Do you remember? Uh, I don't know. It was. I like, don't. Anyway, uh, but but it was. He had to turn the air conditioner off in the car. And he's like, it's getting really hot in this car. <laughs> Sun's getting I, real low, big guy. <laughs> I've, had, I've had to record in a hot car before because uh, my usual recording space had a sleeping infant or a loud infant in it. So I've I've been there on that one. Yeah. That's not fun. Yeah, I've. Uh... Oh, I can't, Mike. Can I tell the one? Can I tell the one? I, I was, I was one? getting ready to throw you under the bus, so you might as well do it. I know what you're okay. getting ready to say, and right. if it's not, I will you say that this, one. All right. So this is the craziest one. When we we do our show live, so we used to do these two and a half hour shows. Sometimes we would just let it go. We would just just run the show as long as it it went. Um, we didn't have uh, time control back then like we do. We're getting a little better about that. And yeah. uh, so I we were interviewing T and Pip, and it was our season one. Mm -hmm in about two hours and i was drinking beers and stuff and and i really had to pee and i'm the host of the show right so i can't i was like i can't get up and just leave but i can't hold it anymore and, and so i <laughs> i had a gatorade bottle in here and i peed while we were recording nobody knew nobody knew, but i did <laughs> What? I did it live <laughs> on the air. So if, if if you want to go back to that episode and try and look for it, you might figure it out. But uh, but I don't know. I, I think it was pretty slick because later I told Mike, he's like, you what? <laughs> I can't believe I just did a spit take on the air. That was my first one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, you know, and then there was the one from the bathroom because uh, I was recording with another group of people. We had our regular night and I was at a hotel because I was traveling for work and uh, I couldn't get reception in my room. So I got I went down to the lobby and I could get reception there, but I didn't want to podcast in the lobby because there's people walking back and mm -hmm. forth. So they had a public bathroom that nobody was in. So I went and sat in a stall for an hour and recorded a podcast. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I imagine people coming in and out like, the fuck is talking to themselves in here? What the hell are they talking about? Yeah, Pete, so, uh, Pete's usually a very quiet, respectable person in the bathroom, unless A, he's podcasting, or B, I happen to be in there. <laughs> if he knows I'm in there, he likes to be loud. <laughs> and proud. Hey, Mike, you like that hey, one? Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's a stinker. Woo! Right. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Anyway. All right. So um, so let's let make sure you check out the the melting podcast because it's uh you know it's really good stories. And Mike, I, you know what? I gotta I'll I'll be a hundred percent honest with you. I have not listened to it yet. I've been so busy, Mike. But I think you checked it out, right? I have. Sure, I have. I like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Cool. I, it makes me feel a little worthless, like English word wise. <laughs> Like, I feel a little literarily inferior, maybe even <laughs> in, infirm. <laughs> that is not our aim, but uh, I'm going to keep that as a... Uh, uh, thank like, you. I'm going to count that an achievement, actually. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Mike, achievement? Unlock. Yeah. So, so Mike, Mike has a... Uh, what do you have, Mike? A, uh, a lexicon inferiority complex? Yeah, well, I do now, thanks to the oh. Melting Podcast. No, I'm just kidding. We, we actually call uh, our fans lexiconosaurs. So oh, you're like, nice. right on it there, Peter. Yeah. Now, <laughs> fantastic. There fantastic. No, it is. It, it's a good... If you, it, it really helps with uh, vocabulary building and sort of playing around with words. And you guys... Oh, my God. See, all right. I always forget how... You are a pun master. You are very punny... Um, and, and, uh, I'm not even, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna challenge you. I'm not throwing in the gauntlet down right now. I haven't prepared or anything. I'm just saying you definitely have some pun foo. That's all I'm saying. All right. All hey, saying. we got an activity to get to. Yes, so, we do. We do. So August, thank you. I mean, stick around cause we're gonna do a thing, but, but thank you for oh, yeah. joining us for the show. Uh, everybody make sure you check out a F grappin G R A P P I N dot com. Also, uh, look on Facebook, uh, forward slash chain nerd, and check out the Melting Podcast. Not podcast. It is a podcast, but it's themeltingpodcast.com, uh, and check out the show. And, and they can find that in their, their favorite, your favorite podcatcher. Just type in the yep. Melting Podcast. And there's, look, make sure you get it right, podcast, because there are other melting podcasts, and that's not the one you want. No, we're the good one. No. All right. So, Mike, I'm going to turn the show over to you, and here you go. Hey, everybody. It is game time with the Mythwits, but we are not exactly playing a game, but we're going to have a fun activity. We are going to play Dirty Mad Libs, or as we like to call it, Dirty uh, Myth Libs. Myth Libs, yes. <laughs> not Meth Libs, Myth Libs. <laughs> I have chosen an excerpt. John Walker, are you still present in the room? Yes, John I, Walker, stick around. I have chosen uh, an excerpt from the reading, The uh, Midnight at the Welcome Wench, uh, a, re a reading that we did at Balticon. And if you missed it, <laughs> friends, you missed it. Uh, but we are going to take a very small excerpt, and I will ask, uh, I will ask our panelists... Oh, and oh, Cooley, you got to stick around too, because your character is in here. Um, but I will ask our panelists. Uh, we'll just rotate back and forth um, to give me a you know a part of speech. Uh, and I have a bet. I have a bet going on um, oh. that with someone, uh, just uh, my girlfriend, who did not believe that you would know. Oh shit! What is it called? Oh no! Well, you don't know I, it either. Apparently, I lost it. Oh my god. Um. Um. What is a verb ending in ing? What is it called? As a personal or a gerund? A gerund. That's what it is. Yeah, you know what a gerund is. Okay. She she didn't think you would know what a gerund is. Or you could just say verb ending in ing. That's what I do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> she had to get all pedantic on me because you know she loves me, and she she knows it turns me on. Anyway, um, so uh, we're gonna start with uh August, and we'll just run down the list. There's a, there's a good number of these, but I think it's gonna be worth it. Okay. And okay. I encourage you. And, you know, anyone in the, in the chat room, too, you know what, I encourage everyone to, uh, you know, just shout out some different things. We're going to have, obviously, nouns, verbs. This is going to be either as dirty and or as you can make it highbrow, risque, um, or as lowbrow, guttery as you would like to make it. We, there is no holds barred right now, okay? 
Um, this is a safe place, <laughs> I think. So here we go. I'm going to ask you first, August, for a noun. Chainmail cock ring. <laughs> We're starting this up high. Mail cock <laughs> ring. And that was the wrong. No, that was. Why didn't that? Uh... We're starting this up classy, guys. There we go. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, Peter. I need an adjective. Adjective. Uh, throbbing. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Bear with me here. My keyboard was being a little throbby. <laughs> and next, I'm just gonna. Uh, you know, you know who was alternating next. So, uh, distinctive sound. Splort. Uh, and a verb. Verb. Um, and look in the chat room uh, if you guys need any uh, thing here. Um, what was that? Humping. Humping. Uh, yeah, don't blow your wads early. There's a lot, lot of uh, you know, okay. good words to come. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> did I do that? Uh, uh, adjective. Lemon scented. Hmm. And adjective. Adjective. Uh, I'm just gonna say I'm gonna go simple. Red. Hmm. Excellent. Excellent choice, sir. Uh, adverb. Brazenly. As long as I, uh, I'm glad nobody can see me not know how to spell. That's great. Uh, That's fine. <laughs> pro, uh, profession. Um, uh, dancer. All right. Actually, can I change that? Sure. Fluffer. Mm. <laughs> Fluffer. Uh, <clears throat> fluffers. And a body part. Oh, let's go with the uvula. Mm. Um, there's a, another U in there somewhere, I think. But anyway, no, it looks like it's better. Okay, uh, body part plural, Peter. Body part plural. Nipples. More than one. Nipples. nipples. All right. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And a food. Jelly beans. Jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. That's my nemesis. Adjective. Um... Bumpy. Mm -hmm. Not Bumby. Bumpy. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, August. You get, you get the, uh, as they say in um, Cards Against Humanity, you get the Hitler card. A group activity. <laughs> Sorry, I'm eating a jelly bean. Hang on. Oh. Uh, group activity. Let's go with naked laser tag. Naked laser tag. Uh, and a body part, Peter. Body part, Peter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> body part, Peter. 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 I'm going to say throat. All right. And a noun. Peter. <laughs> I'm going to capitalize that just for the hell of it. <laughs> that was intent that's what I intended. Thank you. Nice. You're yes. welcome. Uh, of a gerund. Gerund, uh, um, slipping. All right, and we're all you're getting close to being done. Sorry, we still got more. <laughs> Sorry, we're not even close. All right, characteristic sloppiness, and you have one too, Pete. Um, uh, characteristic. Um, um, um. Sloppiness. Uh, I'm sorry. Um. Doesn't have to be Ness. It could be sloppy or, uh, you okay. know, whatever. Uh, uh. Charming. Uh, uh, sultry. What's the word? Uh, um, tardy. Tardy. Was that tarty or tardy? Tardy. 
Not tarty. No, I, you know, I like tarty better. Yes, oh. tarty. That's a better one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Reminds uh, me of me. <laughs> an occupation. Giraffe pimp. Giraffe pimp. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. God bless you. Uh, hold on, I need to copy and paste. Some of these are uh, the same. Bling, bling. And a verbing. A verb ending on ing. Otherwise known as a gerund. God damn it. Um, a verb ending. Um, uh, fuck, I don't know. Uh, sweating. And a verb... Hover. And an adjective. We're almost uh, done. Uh, ladylike. <laughs> All that for tardy. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what Paul said. Okay. Um, uh, what was that? I'm sorry. Ladylike. Lady like, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and I need a noun. Make this one a good one, a good juicy one. <laughs> <clears throat> you say juicy, I think grapefruit. So I'm not gonna go with grapefruit. <laughs> okay, that's juicy. You said juicy. juicy. Yeah. All right, I got to copy and paste that a few times. That that word appears several times in its own context throughout the story. Fantastic. And Pete, you will need to give me a drug paraphernalia. A drug paraphernalia. Okay. Um, what's my favorite? Uh, I'm going to say... Uh, uh, straw... I oh. know... Uh, Shit, drug paraphernalia. I'm not, I'm not actually. I don't really. I don't really know drug paraphernalia yeah. much. Uh, razor blade. Okay. <laughs> razor. I used to just chop blade. them up and eat them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. The blades are O's. <laughs> and uh, for you, my friend, a drug. See, that would have been an easier one for me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go with uh, Vicodin. Vicodins. I like Vicodins. Vicodan. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know how to spell that one. Oh, sure, yeah. Okay, of course you uh, verb ending in I-N-G. Yes, Peter. Also known as a gerund. <laughs> Why do you keep giving me these? Um, uh, Rudeg. Oh, good job, Jenna. <laughs> Jenna. And Rudeg. an adjective. Oh. Did I, did I say diseased yet? No. I've been thinking on that one for a while. Do diseased. <laughs> sure. Gladly. I uh, said bong. I should, yeah, that was a good one. Bong would have been a real good one. It's a funny word, too. Uh, wait a minute. You give me another gerund, I'm going to fuck you up. I got a good one. Um, uh, unfortunately, a verb ending in uh, ed. A gerund dd. <laughs> Munged. <laughs> what was that? M U N G. No, M U N G G E D. Munged. I'll tell you what munging is before we start the thing. Just so Great. we'll have it. And another uh <laughs> another <laughs> verb ending in E D. Uh, and this is the last one, so make it a good one. Ooh, okay. Verb ending in E D. Uh, let's do stripped. Okay. All right. Now, do you know what munging, you know what munging is? What is munging? Munging. M munging. Munging is when you have sex with a corpse, right? And you finish in it, and then someone puts their mouth down at the that body part, and someone else jumps on the body. Shooting out all of the stuff that you put in it, plus all the stuff that was in there before. There's a word for that. 
Really? There, there might be. And you waited all the way until the end. Like you couldn't come up I with think, mugging. <laughs> mugging. I didn't think of it. I didn't think of okay. it before. All the gerunds you had. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, here we go. All right, so Peter, and just so yes. anyone else who's familiar with the story, uh, this is the part where uh, James Campbell and Duran Higgins are uh, exchanging words after uh, James wakes up after being zapped by the captain. Uh, and so Jonathan Reinhardt, if you're still in the room, I am going to be reading the parts uh, like you read your <laughs> parts because that's just the right thing to do. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to actually try and read um, the... Uh, what is that called part? The, um, the narration part, the way that uh, our other, um, what's his face? What's his name? Uh, 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 Pipes. Pipes McLaren. We had him on the show. Well, well, what's his name? Oh, my God. Dave, uh, Dave, Dave Robeson. Dave Robeson. Dave Robeson? Yeah. yeah, the way Dave, Dave Robeson uh, wrote. You can't, no offense, you can't do the buttery man voice. Uh, well, no, now that I'd unplugged my microphone, now I can't. <laughs> no. I had it all set up. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> James awoke on a small but comfortable bed. He was naked but covered with a chainmail cock ring. This was obviously in an officer's quarters aboard some kind of sea vessel. However, he didn't feel throbbing. There was no sound of splurting, and the ship didn't, wasn't humping, at least not the way it should. Then he remembered and muttered quietly to himself, James Campbell says, an airship, Red Death, Lamont, in flames, pirates. Yes, it's all coming back to me now. As James began to get his wits about him, he sat up. The room was bathed in a lemon-scented red light. It <laughs> poured from a lantern upon a small table. Next to the table sat a middle-aged man. The man was brazenly dressed and didn't look anything like the fluffers above <laughs> James whittled <laughs> around and put his uvula on the floor. Oh, God. <laughs> Never taking his nipples off of the man. <laughs> Good afternoon, James. There's a warm cup of jelly beans next to you. I figured, I figured you'd be bumpy. I figured you'd be bumpy. We'll have naked laser tag as soon as Jay wakes up and starts it. <laughs> This should hold you until then. James kept his throat on the man and nodded. He wasn't sure what was going on, but he wasn't about to let, this, let his Peter down. <laughs> However, it began to occur to him that he was in a comfortable bed that was not, and it was not being restrained in any way. <laughs> yeah, these are the parts that Pete wrote, though. <laughs> He was in a comfortable bed and not being restrained in any way. All right. Not being restrained. Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> James was good at slipping people. It wasn't, <laughs> it, it wasn't a major part of his job after all. It was a major part of his job after all. <laughs> and the other, man, <laughs> the other man seemed both sloppy and tarty. <laughs> <laughs> this was... <laughs> This was no pirate, but... No, he was a tart. What about the others, he thought? Was this a good... Was this a case of good giraffe pimp, bad giraffe pimp? <laughs> <laughs> he realized that he had been sweating at the man for an uncomfortably length of time. Oh, God. For the sake of hospitality, which he had been extensively trained, he thought it best to at least... Hover the man before him. <laughs> Jesus. <clears throat> like a toilet how, when you hover? Yeah. <laughs> James says, how do you know my name? Sensing that the man was ladylike with his situation, <laughs> Durant, Durant thought it might be best to give him some sense of comfort. He pointed to the grapefruit next to James. <laughs> <laughs> there are clothes on the grapefruit next to you. <laughs> they, are as, they are as close to your thighs. <laughs> As I could muster. <laughs> uh, they are yours to keep. Uh, and you're, let's see, uh, you'll find them unmolested. You're all your belongings, you'll find unmolested. Uh, be mindful of your, oh shit, I need a liquid real quick. 
A liquid? Um, <laughs> warm jelly bean. Be, warm jelly bean juice. Be mindful of your warm jelly bean juice. I wouldn't want to have to clean that up. This is my room, after all. <laughs> Duran pulled a Duran pulled a small razor blade and a stick from his pocket. Using the lantern, he lit the stick and then used that stick to light the razor blade. <laughs> Sweet aroma <laughs> began to fill the room. It was Hymian Vicodin, a rare and somewhat expensive item from these parts. Yeah, as, so. James, as James took his pants from the grapefruit, Duran continued. <laughs> <That's their grapefruit. laughs> Jay, Jay said your name just before you went out. James, running on his pants, <laughs> shot the man. Dis, uh, shot the man. Uh, diseased gaze. <laughs> oh God, Jesus! <laughs> went out. That's an interesting way to put it. I would have said more like munged out. <laughs> <laughs> or I, I don't know, been stripped into unconsciousness by a lightning bolt. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> End scene. Oh, man. Nice. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Oh, that is some good shit right there. Yeah, people are having a good time with this. When yeah. John Walker said, we have to do this again. <laughs> this, exactly. <laughs> I'm telling you, we we should do, and, and uh, no offense to Noblest Read It, because they, they do a great Mad Libs too, but I honestly think that there's room for dirty Mad Libs, and I think we could just take many excerpts from <laughs> Night at the Welcome Wench. Oh, yeah. and, and and do this more. I, I guarantee it. And, and it would be great because we could have all the readers do it. Yeah. <laughs> we could do oh. that. Hey, Mike, oh, yeah. I'll have a whole novel next year. Oh, shit. So we could take it from oh. any one of those. Oh, my God. That's, it's a done deal. That's one of our shows. We have one of our three shows done. Okay, you're or gonna... at least the game, the activity for one of yeah, our shows, yeah. right? You're, yeah. you're, you're putting jelly beans in your mouth. And uh... <laughs> God, I don't know what's worse. Oh, oh, look, dude, I'm telling you, I fucking hate jelly beans. I hate them. Well, then you're going to love, what are they called again? Bum, boingos, bean, bean, bean boozled. Bean boozled. Oh, bean yeah, yeah, you're going to love them. Oh, oh, and you're going to have to put all of them in your mouth at the same time. At the you same are gonna time. I'll taste all of the nastiness right. and isn't, the isn't that, isn't that the one that has, like, they have, like, grass and, like, snot and I don't okay, know. Okay, the grass like... aren't bad. <laughs> the okay. grass actually aren't bad. Um, The sour milk, yeah. Oh no! Not sour milk. Does it really taste like sour milk? It smells like sour milk. I couldn't even put it in my mouth. So have fun with that, Peter. Oh, this is gonna be great. <sighs> you are, you are cordially invited. You you do realize that, right? Oh, Bobby. I'll be. I, I, I'll, I'll try to be there. It all oh, depends yeah. on if I can get away from the from my vendor booth down there. But uh, oh, the vendor will be up? closed. Our shows at, at yeah. is it nine oh, o'clock? Yeah, right. You're good. It is, it is. It is awesome. Yeah, but so, uh, we do every every time we do a live show, we do one of our own Mad Libs. So just you know, dig on that. Fantastic. So, so Mike, you got off easy, man. And and Tori says she's sponsoring the, uh, <laughs> the jelly beans. Yeah. Well, oh, you, goody. You know what? You Yay. know what? I, it, you know what? We'll see what happens. You know, hopefully by Balticon, I'll have my job, and we can um, we can have a comparison video. You know, compare videos, and uh, we'll see. We'll see who just loses more. Hey, what's is? Would it be really really good? Radio, if I throw <laughs> up in front of everybody. <laughs> no, no, it won't. No, it, no, no. not even live show. No, not even. No, no, not good. No, but you but wanted you, to catch me down when we were down at uh, uh, Dragon Con. Oh, you you dry heaving. Dude... A good spell of dry heaving will definitely be good for radio. <laughs> okay, but not the actual production. <laughs> right, right. Oh, that's that's bad. Right, but hey, we... listen, it's it's all a matter of how many can you keep in, you know, before you have uh -huh. to spit them out. It's yeah. gonna be great. Oh. Now, all I'm, now, all I'm now, thinking of is mixing the, the vomit flavored ones, the toothpaste flavored ones. Are they bad? The vomit ones, yeah. The toothpaste aren't so bad. Okay, the vomit, vomit ones, yeah. The vomit nice. ones, yeah. How about that? Yeah, yeah. Vomit, vomit toothpaste, milk, yeah. Vom mm -hmm. milk, yeah. yeah it's it's just. Oh, is this what it was like, Pete? Is this is yes. this what the other side of the coin is? Yeah. <laughs> this, this is this is what it's like to be on the other side, Mike. This is. Yay! This is... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> in the immortal words of flounder in um in uh what is that animal house uh, in, no, in animal house this it, is gonna this be great, great. <laughs> awesome all right all right let's wrap this puppy up 
Everybody, uh, again, one more time, make sure you go to AFGRAPPIN.com uh, and check out all of August Grappin's stuff. Uh, you can find him on Facebook.com forward slash Chain Nerd and uh, the T H E M E L T I N G P O T C S T podcast. Uh, dot com and and look up the melting podcast in your favorite pod catcher to uh, to subscribe to the show uh, and we podcasters live and die by our subscriptions so please subscribe oh, yes. if you should like it hey subscribe listen to a couple if you have to unsubscribe or whatever but you know what they'll never unsubscribe people always forget to do that so uh, yeah just you know just subscribe you can unsubscribe whenever you know no but don't <laughs> unsubscribe it's no, a good no, it's a good no they no Mike they won't see that's the thing even, even if you know, it just it adds to it. Let me ask but, you something. What? Do you ever get people who like subscribe to you and then go, "Dude, like I have been listening to your podcast for like a month now, and like I get no kind of advice about how to, you know, you know, pot, you know, oh, God. like yeah. you no, know, nothing like that. You've yeah. never gotten." Now, Mike, you know, well, do you, you get any might. comments? Do do you get any? It can, do you, it can happen. <laughs> do you get feedback? Because we almost we get almost no feedback. Um, we get a little. We do have a Facebook group that, at the very least, we uh, that's where we put out our calls for when we do our Mad Libs, is right. on Facebook and Twitter. So we at least get a little bit of interaction there. Most of the interaction we get will be like at Balticon Live and stuff like that. We don't get and a ton of feedback. Hold on, and, real quick. We got a we got a request from John Walker. We got this oh, before yeah. we go because I mean he's he's oh. our buddy. He said read all of Gus's goddamn books. So there you go. That's what he yeah. says. He says would, read them all. That would also be appreciated. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, let's do the thing. All right, everybody. Here we go. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Mythwits. We're live on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask our guest questions or just banter with the other Mythfits. We had a ton of them. Thank you all. This was great. Uh, if you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes on Facebook or YouTube. See, I did this. I went like this because that's on that screen over there. You all can't see that. But <laughs> find us on Facebook and Twitter as Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. We've got a lot of people subscribing to it. Thank you all thank for listening you. again. I thanked you last week, but I'm going to thank you again. Yes, you listening right now. Check it out. Thank you. Um, and jump to the like chat room. Even just to say hi. Even yeah. if you just give us a love, just say, hey, we love you. You're yeah. important. You're good enough. And you're, you're good enough. You're people worthy. like you. Yeah. Complete you. They like us. All right, we do the like, follow, subscribe to wherever it's appropriate, and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media and help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. We live and die by those. Please help us out. Do, do some like, follow, subscribe thingies. Uh, Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com for more cool shows. And dude, uh, Game School is killing it, man. Killing it. It is awesome. Yay. We're like four episodes deep in the release episodes, and they are fantastic. Everyone gets better every time. Way to go, um, Spence. Mythwits yeah, Spence and James killing it. Uh, Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it, don't sell it, and don't try to make chain mail out of it, even though it's full of holes. <laughs> make sure to check out Aetherforge.com for more cool stuff. Join our mailing list. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And till next week, Mike. Honey, I found my pillowcase. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it sticky? I got is it. it? No. Okay. Wait, no. All right. It's oh! Not... It's got to get oh. washed. <laughs> and we're out. <laughs>